screen everybody, welcome to UW Marathon CS 540, week 8, Principal Component Analysis. If you're new here, welcome, be sure to check nannyblog.com and click this image and you're able to find this page. So in week 8, we mainly talk about uh, the PCA, uh, so in this tutorial, I'm going to mainly talk about the PCA definition, formula, and also its interpretations. So this week is really just about mathematics. So let's take a look to it. In order to know PCA well, we have to first um, understand what is uh, the variance. So the variance, the formula, is actually equals to n, which is how many um, samples in total. And we just get all of these, all of the um, samples, which is xi here, and a minus is um, mean value here and just take a square of them and just add them all together all the samples so here is an example um, let's say there are, there are two axes um, x and y axis and um, here I have some points so for example the x1 here is 1 2 and oops x2 here is 3 1 and um, we have a x3 here that is minus 1 minus 3 so in order to calculate the variance here um, we actually need to calculate two of them so one is based on x axis here and the other is based on y axis here so based on x x axis um, we can actually know um, based on this formula. So there are three, three points, and the x-axis, the value are uh, one, three, and minus one respectively. So the average value here, x bar here, is actually just one. So we can have um, x minus one plus three minus one plus minus one minus one. So this is um, the value here. So after calculation, it's actually um, eight over three. And same method, we can have um, the mean value for y-axis here is just uh, um, zero. So we have two minus zero plus one minus zero plus minus three minus zero and we can get this as three, 14 over 3. So this is the basic idea of how to calculate um, the variance in different um, axes. So uh, let's take a look on what is PCA and their formula. So the definition of PCA is pretty simple. Um, so it's just to drop a line here and to make the distance, for example, the x1 is here, um, which is x1's length so if you make a perpendicular line to the PC PC line here so that is the right line here and we are going to have this line here which is the orange line here and this line um, so every point they got this kind of length and we just want to make sure that they got the maximized variance um, in all these different um, distance. So let's say uh, the PC is an actual vector, so it is A and B. So we have a um, a condition that is the A squared plus B squared is 1. So which is to say the PC here, or you could say um, the probably I change to a vector. The vector here is actually a union vector. So vector is just the direction of the B here, uh, direction of the PC line here. So what we're going to calculate is first how we can calculate this orange line. So let's imagine here we got a point, which is x, y. And here is just a line here. And we can say um, it's a, b. So the direction is actually just AB. So in order to calculate this orange line, we can just have um, X times A 
plus y times b. So pay attention here, a, b is just a unit vector. So the unit vector means their, um, the length of this vector is just 1. And we just times them, and we are able to get this, um, to get this line. So that is to say, if here we have a point, uh, which is x, y, so what it does is actually uh, the point times the unit vector here. Um, probably I use v here. So this is how we calculate the length here. And hence, in order to represent um, our definition here, so we have the unit vector as a and b. So what we do is just we have a plus 2b, which is a times 1. So this is x1 point, point x1 here, the value. So that is a times 1 and plus b times 2 here. And we just take a square. And same for the x2 here, that is 3a plus b squared plus, and here is um, the minus 1 minus 3, so that is minus a minus 3b here. So what we're going to do is we just want to make sure to uh, maximize this value, which is the variance here. So here actually we have an assumption, that is the mean value here, which is x bar here actually equals to zero for all the terms. And the reason why it satisfies is because if we have a lot of points um, all along this, for example, diagram, so actually along this axis, um, they can just cancel each other. So, for example, um, along the first PC, um, all their uh, values just cancel each other and which is x to zero. So here we just minus zero and we just um, jump that part. And another thing here is for this um, particular example, actually we have a one-third um, at the very front in order to get the variance. However, we just ignore that part since we just want to maximize this part. And that's, since that's a constant part, so we can just ignore that. And in order to calculate um, the maximum value for this, we have to use the Lagrange method. So the Lagrange method is by given the condition here, which is a squared plus b squared equals to 1, and to find the maximum value of a, um, a term, then we can um, just find the agent vector to be equal to each other. So, for example, here uh, is um, b, function b, a, b, and here is uh, the r, a, b function. So we're going to have the b, a, b equals to, so this is the derivative um, sign here. So when their derivative are equal to each other at a particular point a and b, then we can calculate the maximum um, value of this term. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate, um, which is we just use r, a, b, minus b a b so from this we can actually equal to zero then we get uh, what we want so what we're going to do is we first um have this term which is a plus 2b 3 plus b squared plus here just cancel uh to make the since it's a square here so just change the minus sign to the positive sign here a minus here since it equals to each other um, we cannot make sure that it just exactly equal to each other so we have to have a lock around constant number here and that is a squared plus b squared minus one so here let's say um, it is l a b equals to this one then we're going to calculate l a b um, derivative sign here and we deri um, derive by a and the same thing and we're going to derive by b so after we calculate this part so this part should be 22a plus 16b minus 2a lambda and the second part is 16a plus 22 20ab minus 2b lambda 
since this term has to be zero. So both the derivative for a and b equals to zero. And hence, right now, we have three equations. One is here, second is here, and third is here. So we have three equations, and we have three unknown variables, which are a, b, and lambda. Therefore, we can calculate um, the a, b, and lambda's value. But here, I have to mention one thing. So since a squared and plus b squared here equals to zero, so the a and b value can both be um, positive or both be negative, or one be negative, one be positive. Um, so, which is to say, if in the th first and third quadrant um, in this diagram here, actually they're in the same p on the same PC line, so that just doesn't make sense. Which is um, a and b both be on positive or negative case, and of course we can calculate the lambda value. So. For the PC1, actually we have a number one value. And what about if A and B, one of them is positive and the other is negative, then we actually will be the case that in either uh, second or the fourth quadrant. And that we are going to have a PC2 here, which has a corresponding number two. So the PC1 is actually the first PC, or you could say, uh, which is which has the maximized uh, lambda one here, and for PC two is the second PC, so the lambda two here is smaller or equal to lambda one here. So here we just have a two-dimensional case, uh, which is which means that for all the points here actually just got x and y value. But how about like for example we have um, three or fourth dimension, then we're going to have a third and fourth PC uh, line here. So here there is a um, thing that is the the PC one and PC two actually perpendicular to each other. So that is the case. So next, I would like to um, derive since just now we just have three um, points. So I would like to derive it to um, all kinds of points here. So the formula is actually this one: i equals to zero n, and this is x i. Vt square. So what we're going to do is just we want to make this formula to be the maximized value. So here the xi is um, the points, for example, um, x1, x2, etc. And here the v is just the PC vector, which is the, also the unit vector. T here is just a transpose. So it's exactly like um, the point, for example, xi dot. Um, v. So this is same situation. Uh, of course, we going to have a square here. Uh, since we are, we are going to calculate the variance um, of this formula. So let's derive the formula here. Um, so this value actually, so I just put on the left hand side, so which is x, v, t, x. And of course, we have a condition that is v times vt um, equals to 1. So here we have to pay attention that the x here, so x is just equals to x1, x2, da da da, until xn. So it's actually a 1 times n um, dimension. So the x transpose will be n, the dimension will be n times n. So if you put, put back to here, actually this value just equals to a one um, a one dimension like this. So um, we can calculate Lagrange Lagrange b and x and lambda this function so it actually equals to this one minus and hence uh, we are going to get the v so actually we can consider these two terms as the v square uh, when we derive derive it by the v here so here is two actually we just cancel um wait um 
x t x v here a minus two. So actually, you can see the two here just cancel on, since the next term is just zero. So here we actually got this term, and to simplify it, we actually got x t times x minus lambda, and times the unit vector here and the unit vector here um, but here we have to make a little bit changes since here is the matrix format however lambda is just a value so what, what we're going to do is we just add a uh, identity matrix here so i is for example if we just have three dimension then i is just this value so I will get changes corresponding to the dimension of the uh, x matrix here. And in order to make this form, this term, to a equals to 0, there are only three uh, possible solutions. One is the, the value of this term equals to 0. The second is this term equals to 0, which is unit vector. However, these both ca cases are just impossible since we cannot make the unit vector length to be zero or um, this value to be zero and hence the only conclusion is these both two terms are just perpendicular to each other so if two vectors are perpendicular to each other their dot um, multiplication actually equals to zero so this just um, proves that um, so the unit vector is actually perpendicular to um, our all the, the data co covariance um, here and furthermore we can also calculate uh, the value of lambda here so by expanding this formula to um, to size so we can actually have so act, um, v equals to lambda so here since we already have a um, you know the unit vector here so we can just um, ignore the um, identity matrix here so we have this term and if you see this term is actually uh, we want to maximize this term right so um, we already have this term so we just need to times another um, v transpose um, vector of v here so v x t x and v t is actually just equals to lambda the lambda value which is the Lagrange um, constant here so another question is why why the um, PLA so another question is why PCA is so important um, so just the case that we saw if the, po the points here actually got a lot of dimensions um, we cannot just draw like if here is a 3D um, diagram which means every point they got three values so um, they got three dimensions however if there are four or five um, a lot of um, dimensions then we are unable to visualize in this kind of diagram so what we do is actually we have the PCA uh, and you remember there are PC uh, for example first piece of value and second piece of value then we can just for example extract um, two of them and corresponding to PC1 and PC2 so we just project a for example a 3D um, diagram into a 2D diagram which is like this and also we can if we have for example five dimensions we can still project them onto this and since PC1 corresponds to lambda 1 and PC2 corresponds to lambda 2. Not, uh, the lambda 1 has the largest value and so on and so forth. So PC1, this line here, the first PC, is actually um, the most important PC line. And PC2 is also uh, will be the second important PC line. So if we like want to like project a lot a huge dimensions of data then we can just project it on a 2D diagram and that is super convenient and another thing here is um, I want to mention what's the real meaning of 
the PC uh, PC line here. So let's suppose there are a lot of um, testing points here. So and if we calculate this is our PC. Here is our PC one here. So actually is since we are just get um all this value here. So what it does is actually it calculates um the maximum variance. So this this line here it can best describe um the allocation of the dots in this line since they got the maximum variance. So if the line is larger, so for example, if we have a a um you know a length here, so this is the length. So for example on this line, if the dots are just um, randomly, or you could say their um, allocation is more, um, you know, uh, widely, then we can say they have a larger variance. And the same case here. Last but not least, I would like to talk on the alternative representation of um, our PCA. So last time we ha actually have this formula, and and we are going to have the L. So I, j I just represent the L here, which is the L1 square. Um, here is I, you can say, which is just equals to the Xi times the unit vector transpose here and square. And that is the length um, all together here. Um, however, we can actually find out that for any, for example, here is point x, uh, x1, so, and here is perpendicular. So for whatever case, we actually have a thing that is L1 squared plus L2 squared equals to L3 squared. So this, this condition always satisfy. And if we maximize um, the L1 here, since L3 here is a constant, then we can also alternative say that we're actually minimizing the L2 here. So alternatively, here is we want to max this uh, term in order to find a PC uh, line here. We can also say we want to minimize the L2 term. In order uh, to find it. And the way to represent the L2 here is actually, um, if you see, here is L3 uh, and here is L1. So L2, so if you see L1 plus L2, which is um, L1 plus L2, if we see the L2 as this direction, it equals to L3. So L2 is actually just L3 minus L1. And of course, they are all um, in vector form. So L3 here is just the xi value. And L1 here is the thing that we just calculate here. So we minus xi times vt here. However, there's one thing we have to um, pay attention. That is, actually the xi times v is actually a value. Uh, it's already just a value. However, the xi here is still a vector. So what we are going to do is we times this term. Let me erase this part further. So we, we are going to time this term with a unit vector here. So this is a term that um, we are going to minimize. So in comparison with the maximize, we also have an alternative way um, to, rep to represent the PCA um, formula by minimizing this term. Um, however, we can just use, uh, in order to maximize the term, we can actually use the Lagrange method, so that's pretty um, convenient. However, if we want to minimize the term, we just find the derivative of this function, so we can still prove it with the same methods compared to uh, the Lagrange method. So I hope this tutorial um, is beneficial to you, at least you learned something. Besides, this tutorial is just basic math. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, please feel free to let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.